Good evening and thank you for joining us for Krem News at 10 tonight. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Tonight we are following a developing local story that's now making national headlines. We have new information on Mark Few's citation for driving under the influence on Labor Day. We have learned that the Zags head coach waived his arraignment so he did not appear in court. Few pleaded not guilty to the charge of driving under the influence. Additionally, Few's driver's license has now been suspended because he refused a field sobriety test. The police report states that a breathalyzer test registered his blood alcohol level above the legal limit. Few was pulled over in Coeur d'Alene on Monday night. New tonight, a COVID-19 death at the Spokane Veterans Home. In addition to the death, the Washington State Department of Veteran Affairs said six other residents and 10 staff members just tested positive for the virus. Since July 21st, the Spokane Veterans Home has had 47 people living and working at that facility test positive for COVID-19. Also new tonight, an outbreak linked to the Grant County Fair. Health officials there are reporting 70 new COVID cases. That number could also go up because Grant County is experiencing a backlog in testing, they say. The fair ran from August 17th through August 21st. They did recommend masks while folks were indoors, but did not require them because the statewide mask mandate took effect after the fair ended. Well, the statewide indoor mask mandate will be in effect when Spokane, the Spokane Interstate Fair rather starts on Friday. In looking at the fair, website organizers have outlined what people can expect, including in the guidance. It's encouraged that guests wear masks on rides regardless of vaccination status. Fair goers are also asked to consider wearing a mask at concerts and rodeos if they cannot socially distance. This is the fair's 70th year and certainly the first time it's been held during a pandemic. Tonight, new guidance from the World Health Organization on COVID-19 booster shots. The WHO asking rich countries now with large amounts of the vaccine to refrain from offering booster shots until the end of this year. WHO's director says, quote, he was appalled that a pharmaceutical manufacturer says supplies are large enough that people in well-developed countries can get boosters, while people in other countries are facing a critical shortage of shots. Some countries, including the U.S., are starting to make plans for people that are immune compromised to get booster shots here in the U.S. Well, earlier today, I was reporting from Kootenai Health in Coeur d'Alene. The reason was to bring you more details on the health care crisis in North Idaho right now. To help treat coronavirus patients, some 20 medical personnel, military medical personnel, will be working out of the hospital for at least the next five weeks. They will help take some of the pressure off of Kootenai Health staff. The Department of Defense team includes 14 nurses, four doctors, and two respiratory therapists. The team will extend their stay if needed, but... Let's hope that is not necessary. We were delighted to see that, uh, that the, the standard of care was, was exceptional for the patients admitted at this hospital. Um, despite the sort of unprecedentedly large volumes of patients currently being cared for, um, the, the staff, the nurses, the physicians have been able to rise to the challenge and, uh, and, and, and fight the good fight. Um, we're also incredibly fortunate to be able to be here and provide some, some much needed offloading of that stress on this local system. In the past year and a half, Kootenai Health has not once shut down its COVID-19 unit. The hospital, the hospital rather, has consistently maintained between three to five ICU COVID patients. Now today, there are around 40 COVID patients. That's right, 40 in the ICU. 20 of those patients are on ventilators. It is important to stress the vast majority of these patients, about 90%, are not vaccinated. And that number I just mentioned does not account for the non-COVID patients who need critical care right now, too. So the ICU is certainly carrying an unsustainable load right now. All that demand is having an impact on other parts of Kootenai Health as well. The hospital is having to find non-traditional places to treat non-critical patients. In fact, the hospital stood up a COVID overflow facility in a conference space. As of today, 11 hospital beds in that overflow room are now being used by people who need care. The room inside the Health Resources Center is equipped with a total of 22 hospital beds. When those beds fill up, hopefully they won't, right? But if they do, we will continue to work within the community with the Kootenai County Operations uh, of Emergency Management, other local hospitals, home health, skilled nursing facilities to do our best to discharge and manage patient care as best we can. If there is a need for continued field hospital resources, that becomes a tougher challenge because again, we don't have the staff 
and the beds to do so. So it will be a community effort if we need to go beyond the, uh, the Health Resource Center. And to complicate things even more, Kootenai Health has 550 open positions. 240 of those positions are clinical caregivers that are desperately needed to help with this COVID surge. Well, the call for help has come in, and are you interested in answering that call? New tonight, Krem 2's Morgan Trow explains how people can help during this surge in cases. North Idaho health care workers are engulfed in the COVID-19 pandemic, and the Idaho Department of Health and Welfare says this area is suffering the most in the state. It's a really concerning and frustrating time for everyone. Hospitals are struggling. Kootenai Health says there is a severe shortage of staffing and available beds, leading them to activate crisis standards of care. Now, Catherine Hoyer with the Panhandle Health District says volunteers are being requested in high volumes. Certainly we have open positions in call center, data entry, contact tracing, different things like that. Um, some people who do have medical licenses and they're our volunteers, we utilize them for some of the medical positions. So where do you volunteer? You can register to join the Medical Reserve Corps on VolunteerIdaho.com. From there, you choose Find My MRC. After choosing which district, you can apply via the Register Now link. From there, you fill out general information, your credentials and licenses if you are already in or were in the healthcare field, and background on your skills. For the Medical Reserve Corps, there are no requirements. Anyone can register. We really don't turn away people, especially if they don't have a medical license, because we can, use, for every medical person, there's like five more non-medical people that we need to fulfill um, a job. Hospitals will place a request to the district, which then gets sent off to the Idaho Office of Emergency Management. From there, the Medical Reserve Corps in each district of the state is contacted to help place volunteers. The Department of Health and Welfare says although they provide funds and tools to the Medical Reserve Corps, local health districts work with their own hospitals to arrange volunteer support. For people that want to volunteer, they have to go to the state website to register. And if you want to help, once again, you can register at volunteeridaho.com. That website and the additional details I just shared with you can be found by logging on to creme.com or the creme 2 app right now. Morgan, thank you very much. All right, let's talk weather, shall we? When I was outside today, couldn't help but notice that it was a beautiful day. It was warm outside, but also pretty hazy. Meteorologist Thomas Patrick joining us from the Outdoor Weather Center tonight. And Thomas, will that smoke stick around for tomorrow? Yeah, it looks like tomorrow is going to be a very identical forecast to what it was today. Hard to showcase just how hazy it was, but at least our air quality did not take any kind of severe hits. Temperature wise, still plenty warm out there. It was 86 for today. It was also a little bit breezy as well. We saw those wind gusts upwards of 30 miles per hour. And then yes, you mix into the haze to those conditions that I just mentioned. But when we look at the weekend, it's looking much better, less haze, a little bit cooler overall, mid 70s, mostly sunny skies. That's looking like a perfect weekend, but there's a transition day in between now and then as we're watching this next weather system that's going to be th sliding through the area this upcoming Friday. It has a very good chance that we get some rainfall across the area. So coming up, going to detail how much rain could be in the works and the time frame of this system as we go from the 80s today into the 70s for the weekend. My goodness, we could certainly use some rain, Thomas. Thank you very much. Well, we have been telling you a lot about the COVID-19 crisis unfolding in North Idaho. We come back, though, we'll dive into what it looks like across the state line here in Washington. And later on, 1,000 more jobs coming to the Inland Northwest. We'll tell you who's hiring for all those positions. Here's a hint. The company's name starts with an A and ends with an N. We're back after a quick break.